What's going on, everybody? Uh, today I'm going to show you some of my axes and uh, show you how I sharpen them, what axes I run and whatnot. I made it short the other day showing that axe uh, slicing through some paper. And I stated that I'd be showing y'all. Uh, I'm going to try not to take too much time on it just because, I mean, everybody knows. Well, not everybody, I guess. But, you know, most people know what a splitting axe is or a regular axe so i'm just gonna kind of do this if you're interested and uh another thing if you think the fisker splitting axe are the best thing ever i've got something else that is made real similar but the only difference is the handle uh when fiskers jar you to death and this one here it don't jar you near as bad so uh We'll get into it. All right, in my falling pouch, as you've seen in my cutting videos, I just carry a council tool boys axe. It's a, I like the council tool axe. Uh, I like them because they're like coarse, rough steel here, and then they go to that shiny. I like that look in an axe, uh, but it's a boys camp axe. It's got a 28 inch handle. Uh, it fits around your ha hand. You know, you can wrap your hand around it rather well. And what I did for my falling pouch one is I cut it off about right here. So actually mine's probably like a two foot handle. That way I could bang wedges. Uh, some people would say, why would you cut an ax handle off? Why wouldn't you just get a two pound sledgehammer or something? But I like carrying that ax in case uh, I have to cut some small limbs off or Something like that, got my saw hung up. And if you ain't got another saw, you can kind of chop your saw out if you have to. But uh, I just I just like it. It's, you know, if you got a little bit of twigs on firewood and you're loading it up, instead of going over and getting the saw out and firing it up and then all that, and you just take this if it's sharp. When I first started using wedges quite a bit to, uh, cut trees and whatnot. I was banging them with a little Fiskers uh, X15. And it done well, like you can see, it's been used quite a bit. But it done well. The only thing I, don't, I have against the Fiskers is halfway up the handle is hollow. It's empty and it's just like uh, when you hit it, it vibrates. It's just like taking a round pipe and hitting it and watching it, you know, all that vibration goes through it. I don't, it beat my hand to death and which I could have cut this off or, or cut this off and ground it off. But the way I held it and went to hit, I mean, it was eating the palm of my hand up. So I ordered, I didn't want to spend a big, great deal of money on, you know, an ax just because I'm pretty rough on stuff. But I found this Snow and Neely on eBay or Amazon. It wasn't terribly bad. I used it quite a bit. But the only thing is with it, I got the banging wedges pretty hard and the, the head got loose. And when it come from the factory, it did not come sharp at all. It was pretty well blunt. I mean, it was, it was probably the most blunt axe I've ever seen. But nevertheless, it is a good looking axe head. And, you know, so, uh, <clears throat> I've got this double bit axe, and I don't use it much, I just got it. I bought it at an auction. On one side, it's got a little bit of the thicker, like, splitting profile, and on the other, it's a little bit of the, the chopping profile, I guess, I don't know. Seems to me like it is, but I may be incorrect. Uh, it's 30, 31 and a half from the end of the handle to the head. Uh, so, it feels pretty good, you know, it ain't bad. But, what I was going to get into about splitting wood, which I split, I hand split most of all my wood. I do have a small wood splitter, and I'll take you out and show it. But I was using this, this bad boy here. And man, that Fiskers, when I first got it, it, I thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. You know, I was a mall guy before I got this. 
and I just bought this to try it, and I thought, you know, because well, before I never really had any luck with axes. They'd always get stuck, hung. Of course, I live down in the southern part of Kentucky, and, uh, you know, we have mainly all hardwoods here, and they're knotty, twisty, and a lot of this is hard to split. Now, don't get me wrong. You get on some good red oak or white oak that's straight grain, uh, hickory, poplar, you can split it pretty one good lick, beach, whatever. But you get up in some of them tops, or if it's a twi you know, grows in like a twist, shoot, you'd be in trouble. But I was always a mall guy. But I got this, and I thought, this is great. It's half the, half the weight of a mall. I can swing it a lot more times without getting tired. And it splits just as good, if not better than a mall. So I really loved it. But I got to use it. We sold, uh, uh, but the first year, I probably, we probably sold 25 rick of wood or better, and I hand split most of it with this. And uh, I loved it. But the only thing is, at the end of the day, my hands felt like I would have been holding on to a jackhammer all day. You know, like they were still tingling and vibrating after I got done. And that's because this thing is, I don't know how far that goes down in there, that it ain't got nothing. It may not be that far, but I feel like that it is. Uh, oh, golly. Yeah, 32 inches of this handle is hollow. And I don't know what the reasoning is but behind that. There may be a science behind it, but to me, it's not a very good one. I'm not knocking the Fiskers on splitting wood because it does split wood. It splits wood great. I'm knocking it on comfort. But I had been looking for a split axe with a wood handle and hadn't had a lot of luck. You know, I yeah, I found some on the internet that, you know, a couple hundred bucks and I'm, you know, me, if I wouldn't mind giving a couple hundred bucks for an axe that I was going to put up and look. So I was at Home Depot one day and I was just looking. Every time I go to Lowe's Home Depot, any hardware store, I always go check out their saws, go check out their axes, you know, go check out their tools. And uh, I come across this bad boy. It's a Husky. It's a splitting axe as well. It's a full fiberglass handle. It don't have... Uh, it don't have the hollow spot. It feels pretty good in hand. Uh, and where the Fiskers is uh, slick plastic or fiberglass, you know, you got a rubber grip here for this, uh, which I never had any problem with that Fiskers sliding, but uh, it's just all around. Feels a whole lot better. Like uh, you don't get near the vibration out of it. You still get a little. I don't think anything beats a wood handle. You still get a little. And with the COVID and everything, a lot of the hardware stores around here, they was out of a lot of stuff. So wood handle and splitting axe was out of the question. There wasn't any, you know. So I got this one. I really like it. I haven't used it a ton because, so right after I got that Husky, I ran across this one. It's a Collins splitting axe, wood handle. Uh, I got it at Home Depot or Ace Hardware One. I can't really remember. Uh, but when I got it, this end was a little, a little fatter. So what I done was I took a grinder and whittled it down ever so slightly. I didn't want to take it out and make it a split knife, but I just. Where this flares out to go wide, it flared out like that the whole way. So I wanted this level or, you know, even, and you still got good profile for splitting. You know, it's still very good, but you know, it's sharp as well. So, and this bad boy, you do not feel any vibration at all. Not, not none whatsoever, but it's got a, Pretty sure it's got a 35 inch handle in it. Uh, no, well, the whole thing may be 35. The, from the head to the, to the end is uh, 31 and a half. On the Husky, from the head to the end, it's, uh, 
Yeah, 31. Between 30 and a half and 31 and a half, really. And on the Fiskers, it's like 32 and a half. So the Fisker does have a little longer handle. 32 and a half. That's a whole dang gum handle. Yeah, this whole handle is hollow. I don't like that. That's why you get all that vibration. But now as far as these two go, the Fiskers and this Husky, there's not a lot of difference in them. They're real similar. Uh, this Husky may actually come out a little wider as far as its divots to split. And the head's a little wider as far as the width of the, you know, by like a quarter inch, see? You know, I don't think that really matters. What matters to me is, you know, this right here. I can feel that vibration the whole way them up to the head and I'm on the heavy end. You do that it's a totally different vibration. It's a little bit, don't get me wrong, you're gonna feel a little out of anything. But not like Yeah, the husky and the wood hand is totally different. So I'm gonna weigh these up. Like I say the fiskers is a good good split max. Or a decent split axe. It'll split wood. It's just not comfortable to me. Uh, this Collins split axe comes in at a. Let me get a split swing. Five forty-six, five pounds, nearly five and a half pounds. Handle, head, and all. Uh, the Husky comes in. Six thirty-eight head handle and all, and the fish, Fisker's coming in at five seventy. It's up about at like 568, 570. It's bouncing back in between. So, yeah, the Husky's a little heavier than either one of them. But as far as splitting gnarly stuff, I think this would be your go to. And I'll tell you one thing that I do like about the Fiskers uh, I like them because I leave that little camping axe or that X15 or whatever and this big splitting axe, I leave it in my truck in between my fuel tank and my toolbox just sticking up that way if i'm out somewhere and need axe or need something to hit there's been a lot of times i've used them uh, they're right there you ain't got to worry about the weather running them is what i'm getting at and you wouldn't have to the husky either but like wood handle stuff you do uh and like on some occasions like i said i do uh i do have a little cheap uh, manual splitter. I'll flip y'all around. This is my little uh, little splitter. I bought this. Me and my wife bought this at a yard sale probably uh, eight years ago. I think we give the, the person a hundred bucks for it. And I used to have an outdoor hardy wood stove. And uh, I split hundreds of rick with this because for five years we lived at a place that all we heated with was wood, uh, which I don't know how many people are familiar with the hardy wood stove, out, outdoor stove. Uh, it's outdoor, you run water lines to it and it heats the water up in the stove and that water runs through it and it goes back into a radiator in your house and the fan blows off it and it heats your hot water up. So I was heating my hot water and my and in the winter heating the heat, the whole house, about a 2,500 square foot home with a hardy wood stove. And you could, uh, you could uh, set the thermostat on 90 and it could be 20 degrees outside or negative 10 and never even, it would never come under that. But yeah, this thing, we give like a hundred bucks for it, I think. It's got a four and three quarter horse uh, Briggs and Stratton on it. 
It's a, uh, I don't know what the name of it is. Burt, I don't know. Easy split, something or another. I don't know if y'all makes that out. But it run, it does good. I mean, the only thing about this is if you got a round that's big, you know, if you're trying to get something that's like, I got a red oak last year that was, uh, or the year before last, I can't remember. That was like 40 inches in diameter. And I try to get those big rounds up there. And they're, it'll split it because it don't take much. It's all straight grain stuff. It just, it wants to flip over the splitter because the splitter ain't so big. So anyway, uh, that's what I, used to split all the wood with and bang wedges with and whatnot and i may make his collins x a uh wedge banger the only thing i the reason why i like the boys x for banging wedges is because they're like three pounds and i ain't carrying six pounds in my tool belt you know which i've got the suspenders but it still doesn't still a lot of weight unnecessary weight you know if i can't drive it in with a three pound tool then uh i'll use more wedges or get my winch and jacket over so uh that's about it i believe uh, if y'all have any questions just leave them in the comments and holler at me uh oh one other thing i was going to show you how i do sharpen my axes uh, how i sharpen my axe i don't have no fancy uh belt sander or belt grinder or whatever uh I'll just use this right here. I use this deal right there. I hold the axe. I may hit this. Uh, I may hit this husky a bit. Kind of show y'all. But I just hold it at one level. I take my grinder and hold it at one level. try to make the the metal swirl marks even see how much shinier that got than what that is which i've done this one a little bit but not extensively i just do it like that so i get it the thinness i want and typically what i try to do is get one part of the axe thin enough that i can use this deal here and this is what i use to sharpen them with the cut paper it's uh i don't know what brand it is but it's a camp sharpener it has a coarse and a fine one for like fillet knives and hunting knives and one for uh, hatchets and camp axes and things like that and you just take that dude i'm sure most people know how to use them but you got to get it thin enough to get in between these two grooves because what it's got is two diamond pieces of metal you slide it and it sharpens as you go I'm about too thick, I can tell. Cause it ain't really. It's catching some, but it ain't catching. I don't know how this works. This may not cut jack squat, but if you do it long enough, I guarantee it will. Uh, it'll cut it somewhat. It's kind of wanting to tear it a little bit, but it will cut it. But like I say, if you get that dude thin enough, it'll do it. And this is the way that Collins wood handle splitting axe was. It had this little, like, little bump out here at the very end. And, and all I did was just take that down and make it straight instead of having a flare. Uh, but anyway, uh, tomorrow I'm going to cut some more. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the bell. Appreciate it, everybody, and we'll catch you on the next one.